Okay, we're over at the Cowie Diecast Museum, guys. We got a bit of a problem and I need your help. We have this here. Beautiful 1970 Highway 61 Dodge Challenger. None other than Panther Pink with the black stripe. I can't find any info online. All I could find is pictures of it and saying it's a rare car. And as of today, there's not a single one of these on eBay. Usually when there's something not on eBay, that usually tells me it's pretty darn rare. Now my research tells me that's the model number. I didn't know that until I was looking into a 50556. They also made a 50556C, which is identical, except it's a convertible. They also made a similar one to this, but with a white stripe, and they made one with no stripe at all that there's only 500 pieces made. Well, expensive car, guys. I mean, but we can't go wondering what that number is on there, right? We got to know. And might have it on the bottom of the car. So you know what that means. Crack it! Okay, fellas. This is going to be a good one. So we got to crack this. Beat us. Gotta get these. Now, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer. I'm not an expert with Highway 61 stuff. I know that Greenlight at one time bought them out. I know that Highway 61 stuff is sought after stuff because I see it bought and sold a lot in the Canadian 1 of 18 scale diecast collectors group. And I know from my experience that any item that is not listed on eBay at least once is usually pretty rare. Or it's something people don't want to sell. And I know that as soon as some, one, something of Highway 61, GMP, anything like that comes up in Panther Pink, a Mopar like this, sold. So we're going to have a look. Now, there's no number anywhere on the box. It's a 10 years of decade of die cast from 1996 to 2006. And this casting is probably from 2006. Beautiful, perfect shape box. There's actually instructions on the bottom of the box how to open it. I've never seen that. To remove replica from fitting and display stand, holding replica securely in clear backing, turn display stand over, insert thumb under bracket, lift up and detach side bracket. Oh, it clicks off the uh, base, it looks like. That's a first. Like apparently it just snaps off the base. Introducing Highway 61 collectibles by FF Ertl. The third. Our goal at Highway 61 Collectibles is to develop the highway, highest quality product and the greatest value to the customer who demands exciting and high detailed replicas like the name implies, Highway 61 Collectibles. Harkins for the open road and these high detailed precision die cast metal replicas will not disappoint you. 2006 FF Ertl the third. Now I'm not going to comment on that because I don't know if Greenlight bought them after this date or whatever. Um, what I will comment on is how it looks out of the box. We're going to have a look at this thing. Um, Dodge Challengers. Sorry guys. So this thing boasts one of 18 scale over 10 and a half inches long opening doors hood and trunk fully plumbed engine. Working steering and suspension, detailed interior, soft rubber tires. Um, Dodge Chal Dodge's Challenger was a late entry to the Pony Car Bonanza in 1970, being very similar to the Plymouth Cuda E-Body, but
but featuring a slightly longer wheelbase and different body contours. It's funny because I kept confusing this with the Cuda. You can ask Glenn when I was trying to research it. All I kept finding was uh, posts saying it was rare and stuff, but no number. Challengers were available as hardtop coupes or convertibles and offered a performance-oriented RT with options like a manual transmission, steeper rear axle ratios, shaker hood scoop, and a limited slip differential, which could be plushed up with the SE luxury package that added leather seats and a vinyl roof. The 1970-only TA gave a nod to racing with features like a specially tuned 6-pack 340 cubic inch power plant crowned by a giant hood scoop on a fiberglass racing hood, exhaust outlets mounted in front of the rear wheels, and front and rear sway bars to enhance handling. A ducktail rear spoiler and front ground effect spoiler were also standard TA equipment. The 70 and 71 models were virtually identical except for the addition of the split grill and taillight configuration. The Challenger could be outfitted with one of six different engines in 70 and 71 from the 225 cubic inch to the hulking 440. The 440 was available with either Magnum 4 barrel carburation delivering 375 horsepower or the six pack triple two barrel carburetors at 390 horsepower. The 426 cubic inch could be rigged for 425 horsepower for an extra 1,228 bucks, but very few were sold. Well, that was a lot of money back then. 1970 and 71 were the Challenger's high water mark as Dodge sold some 80,000 units in 1970 alone, but performance dropped off considerably after 71. Although the line was produced until 74, the 70 and 71 Challengers were most valued among collectors today for their rarity, distinctive styling, and muscular performance. Of course, Vanishing Point also helped, I'm sure. This doesn't have a black roof or a white roof. It has the pink roof. But let's get ready, guys. Let's get the knife ready, because we're going to just deflate value so we're going to insert the knife and inflate or deflate value make sure I get the tape all the way across It actually has a little bag in the back. I noticed this comes with hood pins as well, like the Black Ghost. Actually, if I didn't have my Black Ghost packed in the box, that's what I would pull out to put beside this one, because the Black Ghost is beautiful and it's by Greenlight, and uh, we'd be able to compare the two. Black Ghost was beautifully done. I heard reports of bad paint, badges of paint on some of them, but mine is perfect. Okay, so this is a higher quality base. It's got the two plastic things on the end, like the Scarface and Godfather cars had, so the box doesn't collapse on itself. Very well done. We're gonna have to follow the instructions to get it off there. Um, it has paperwork right in the molding. Wow, yeah, we're really gonna have to follow the instructions on this one, guys. Okay, so. Let's see here. To remove replica from fitting and displacement. Holding replica securely in clear fitting. Turn display stand over. Insert thumb under bracket, lift up and detach side bracket. Okay, so insert thumb under bracket, lift up. There's actually tape on it too, but it clicks into place, but it's got tape holding it. 
Okay, so that clicked out, that clicked out. Car clear fitting will be released. Okay, I see now. It's actually a pretty simple design. It just tabs that lock in place. Tape holding it on the front. That's why. Ooh. Ooh, that's making me nervous, guys. But it is coming off. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease, but you gotta be careful at the same time because you don't want to be busting stuff, right? Tape holding that in, make sure you get all the tape because you're trying to pull it out, but the tape's holding it in, you're gonna bust something. And see, as soon as I'm releasing the tape, it's coming off. Might have to take the glove off to get some fingernail action in here, guys. Wow. See if I could get the car out without taking it all apart. That way it won't be a bitch to put back. Oh no, it's got those little rivets. I hope it's not gonna. I remember doing an unboxing with you guys, and one of these high end cars had these rivets. I can't remember which one it was, but okay, we're gonna take this right off. Got tape holding that. Okay. Yeah, we did another one like this. I remember these rivets. I don't remember it being exactly like this, but I remember these rivets. Or whatever they are, button fasteners, or and we got it, thank god, without breaking anything. Okay, so to be honest, it's not as heavy as I expected. Um, we do have some paperwork here. Green Highway 61, it comes with a couple little proofs, little bells and whistles here. It's right under the blisters, so you've got to be careful getting it out. Because they use a whole crap load of tape on that. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm gonna get it out from the side. Highway 61, enough with the tape. Enough with the tape, Highway 61, okay? Set. Okay, so what do we got in this box, guys, with this high end collectible? Okay, we're gonna put the collectible here first so we could see what's in this bag. So, we're not gonna open the bag, but we got the little chamois to wipe it down. And it's got that little poker tool that I never did figure out what that's for. I think it's like for opening up the hood and stuff like that. Like it's got a curved end on it. So I think it's for like gently prying the hood open. Okay, so let's have a look at the car itself. I'll have a gurgle first. 
beautiful in the pink, guys. Um, but like I said, not as heavy as I expected. But we're not going to take anything away from that yet. Now, first thing we see is an opening trunk. In my hand, it feels like a green light. Um, but the details are more. Plate says 5C2786 Jefferson, Mississippi. I don't know if this represents a real car that somebody owned. Interesting that they have that block to kind of break everything up on the back windowsill. Um, the pink one, they have a pink one with a white stripe and a pink one with no stripe. That's only 500 made. We're going to check the bottom of this in a minute for a number. It's got the antenna on the side, but it's not an antenna that goes up or down. It's kind of fixed in place. So you got to be careful. Um, Okay, it's got the RT badge right here. I thought it said TA by mistake, but TA, they did make a TA, the Highway 61 in this, which is very similar to this. This has hood pins and it's got extra hood pins in this box because I see a little bag in the box. Well, back license plate in ink. There was a bag it, there. It was, yeah. It's got to be around here then. There was a little uh, plastic bag. Oh, you know what? Where is the... Right here. Oh, there it is. So there's a little plastic bag. It's got extra hood pins because the car has hood pins. I got to tell you a story about the Black Ghost, actually. So I had it out the other day taking pictures of it. And it's got hood pins. The inside of this is beautifully detailed, but the one seat, the passenger seat sits a little bit askew. Um, so I had the hood pins out checking out the motor, and of course, by accident, I flung one of them on the floor. I seen it fly. These hood pins are tiny. Now, we keep pretty clean floors, so I figured it's not going to be a problem. Um... What happened was it went underneath the trim piece on the floor of the fireplace. And I couldn't get it out. Like I thought I was going to lose that. The only way we're going to get it out. And they, they are real fabric seat belts, by the way, guys. I like the pistol grip shifter too. I thought the only way I was going to get it out is by having to take a piece of the molding trim off. And this is a rental property we're in. We don't own it. So I was like, damn, losing a hood pin for one of these models and it's just pristine condition. Opening the box ain't going to shave as much value as losing that off. I'll tell you that, losing a part like that. Um, there's that grill that looks just like the Vanishing Point one done. The white 70 Challenger by Highway 61. That's the Vanishing Point car. Um, same nice looking grill. Now, we're going to take these hood pins out so we can have a look at this motor. We saved the best for last. One thing I don't like about these gloves, you're not as... Uh, easily able to maneuver delicate stuff. Got it. Okay. So we're gonna have a look at the mill. And if you guys know anything about the number of this, let me know. We're gonna look at the bottom of this in a second as well. And that's real good. Open up the hood. 
Okay, it's a piece of trim from under here, but that's not screaming awesome quality. It stuff's just falling off. Like the Ertl stuff, 20 years old, the glue dries out, right? But this is not, well, I guess it's a bit older, 2006. It's not broken. It's got holes. It just goes right on, but it's another case. It dried out glue. Sorry, Glenn, but it's not broken. Yeah, it's not this nature. Now, this is why people get highway 61 look under that hook guys it's got a fender tag even i love the shaker hood on it does that actually say shaker under there it does too it's a shaker right there but that's the detail that they paid battery cables we're going to have a better look at this up on the look see set anyway. But if you guys know a number of this, let me know. In the meantime, we will have a look at the bottom of it. See if there's any number. Number 2456, but that I don't think represents anything. I could be wrong though. Bottoms detailed to all heck, guys. See the brake lines. I'll show you guys. I'm just looking for a number. But look at the bottom of this. See the brake lines? And they actually move. Check that out. And that drive shaft, is that spinning? And we got a spinning drive shaft as well. Characteristic of the silver screen machines I love so much. By Auto World, the General Lee they did and stuff. A beautiful car to look at. I'm not going to blame the trim piece falling off. At first I was bitching, but I'm not going to blame that because glue dries out. Uh, but beautiful car to look at. Yeah, gorgeous details. Rear view mirror actually works as a mirror. Just gorgeous. Okay, guys. So let's go have a look at this beautiful Mopar up on the look see set. So just to go ahead and show you guys how things have changed over the years, other than the color, this is the identical car. Um, it's got the 440. It's 1970 RT. Now, if you notice the shaker hood's a lot more detailed, this one has real hood pins, although these ones look kind of realistic. Um, but it just goes to show you how castings have evolved over the years um this older one also the tires kind of look big every time i see one of these i think those tires look kind of big to me you know not terrible and you guys know i love Ertl, but things sure have changed over the years those tires look a lot more realistic i'll tell you that much I like the paint on the Panther Pink, too. So I'm going to say this, guys. Don't mind this being an afro. I just got out of the shower. Um, pink is hot right now. Uh, not just with Mopar stuff. I'm talking Hot Wheel stuff and just die-cast stuff in general. Jada came out with their Pink Slips line. They're releasing even a classic Batmobile in pink. Um, pink's hot right now, but the Mopar stuff is pink, and in that Panther pink, that thing is hot. If Glenn listed that for sale in the Canadian 1 of 18 group, it would probably be sold in a matter of minutes, just because of the color of it, and it's a nice casting. Now, forgive, guys, because we, we kept the chrome piece out, may as well, rather than it keep falling off. 
But look at that. You could even see the alternator down there, eh? Fender tag. That has got some nice details. Not knocking the older Ertl because you know I love Ertl, but that engine bay don't look like that. That grill very well done too. Even the headlights I like. Gonna say guys, I'm not a fan of how that hood closes. It's like it's misaligned just a little bit. Like the problems with my uh, Ertl Smokey and the Bandit. The doors are all fine, trunk's fine, just the hood. You struggle just a bit to close it. But if I was buying this car, I wouldn't be super worried about that. I would uh, have her sitting on the shelf. Looking pretty. Look at those gauges, guys. That's detail. I hope it's getting it for you. Uh, seat belts, like I said, they're not just uh, plastic molded, they're fabric, which is a nice detail. Love the spoiler on this, guys. The black spoiler on the pink with the black stripe, it just sets it off. Vanishing Point didn't have a spoiler like this, but still a beautiful car. And I like the spoiler on this. Puts it over the top, I think. Another look in the trunk under a different lighting condition here. Ah, there we go. It's even got a jack, eh? And it's got that Mopar stuff on the floor there that the General Lee has. And no matter who the maker is of the Mopars, if they get them accurate, they always have that trunk floor that looks like that. Little look from the passenger side. Now I can confirm the window does not roll up and down like that one. I've been checking every time because there's details that I can miss that people let me know about. I love that shifter. Wow. Don't know the number on it, guys. I just know it's rare because everybody that's listing one says it's rare. And I know from not having any on eBay. And here I am making mistakes. It's actually the 426 under the hood here. I was telling you guys it was the 440, I believe. Overall opinion of that, guys, it's gorgeous, but what sucks is it's a really desirable one because it's that panther pink color, and the hood just, it's not perfect, you know what I mean? Like my the black ghost, it closes nice and flush with the little hood pin things. It's not a terrible thing. You don't notice it when it's sitting there. Like, it looks beautiful sitting there. I love the color combination and everything. I'm a Mopar guy, right? Uh, but that's the only downfall. Uh, beautiful car, though. I wouldn't pay, like, 300 bucks based on a color, though. That's just me. Uh, for example, I was in a new die-cast group. Well, I don't know if it's new, but it seems to be a Canadian one that has one of 18-scale stuff. It's called, like, old-school die-cast, something like that. And the guy was selling a bunch of rare die-cast cars, like ones that I hadn't even seen. And he sold, it was either a Cuda or a Challenger, same year as that, 1970. And it was, he, he had it for 450 bucks. And I said, holy shit, what's so good about that? And then right away, somebody said, sold. I was like, wow, he, that, that mofo didn't even try to haggle. So it's got to be something about this, right? And I looked into it and Glenn pointed out there was a sticker on the car that said there was only like 500 made or something. So a lot of times it has to do with the colors and stuff like that. But a lot of times the box has a sticker indicating the number and this one doesn't. So very curious to know. I just know that it's a very desirable color. And th this casting in particular, I was seeing them Highway 61, same era selling for another one sold for 500 bucks i was like wow now like i said these are low number stuff we're talking about here speaking of low number i gotta show you guys something so you guys remember we did the double 
wing car unboxing we did this here and we did this right now this is pretty run-of-the-mill pretty common the bottom black one here it's from i believe 1995 if i remember correctly it's an older one it's from the mid to late 90s um and like i said it's pretty average we seen one today in the group that I've never seen before. And you want to talk about low number? Check this thing out, guys. Check this out, guys. If you like Daytonas and wing cars, somebody has this and they were asking for information on it. I don't know if it's some sort of custom. I don't think that it is. Um, although customs, some customs have stickers on them like that. Uh, but the box looks pretty chooched. So it looks like it's a legit older Ertl. Now that is rare. 12 of them exist. And it's one of my wing cars, a Mopar. I would love to have that. Um, it looked cool. Even if it's a custom, it looked cool. But I've seen Ertl with the older ones that are unrestored with different color parts on them. They look awesome. So if I ever see one for the right price... Um, one of the few cars that I have left of 164 scale is a project in progress. Actually, I think I still have that. Uh, Fox body Mustang. Love that stuff. It just looks so cool. It's different and it looks realistic, right? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have information on the number of that, um, let me know in the comments because I'm not an expert. I googled it six ways from Sunday. Kept getting pictures of it with the model number. So it was the same car. I discovered that there is a C on the end of the model number for a convertible they made. But I could not find a number. So I know that it's sought after because it's in Panther Pink. It's not for sale anyway. Glenn's not selling it. I don't blame him. Um, but yeah, just curious about the number. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much. Got to get some dodo because I'm on that night shift. Uh, another week is skunked for three days this week, by the way. So two more days if I get skunked, then we know we're in drought season. Uh, so smash that like button for me, guys. Uh, please subscribe if you like it. If you've seen it, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Come along for the ride with us. Get your patch. Um, hit share. And as always, guys, happy hunting and stay cool.